Hey everyone, thanks for learning to play games. My name is Lance, and today I'll be playing through Twisted Fables, a brand new game coming to Kickstarter from Dimension Games. It is a 2-4 to four player game that takes roughly 30-60 to 60 minutes to play. It is a competitive head-to-head -head game where the players are going to be battling each other, building up their decks, and playing devastating combos to try to eliminate their opponent, and the first player that does this will be the winner. In this video, I'll be playing through showing you the first, middle, and end few turns to show you how the game plays and progresses to help you decide whether or not you want to back this one on Kickstarter. As always, if you find these videos helpful, if you like what I do, please consider that like button, subscribe to my channel. It's one of the easiest ways you can support channels like mine so we can continue to grow and produce this content. And if you want to stay up to date on all my videos, also consider ringing that bell so you get notifications anytime I release new content. So let's go ahead and head to the table and we'll see how this one plays. The last couple things I want to cover before getting into the game is the first thing is all the materials you see here are prototype materials and are subject to change and will look a lot better in the final production copy. There's also going to be a, this is the standard version, and then there'll be a deluxe version where you're going to have miniatures for the different characters and some other little bonuses that will help. The other thing is that there are two different modes to the game. There's the basic mode, and then there's a mode that'll include relic cards, which are going to be the other side of these cards. And for this mode, I'm just going to be playing with the base game and not using the relics as an option. From there, then we're going to get into the game, and we have Sleeping Beauty versus Alice. So at this point, then we'll choose a player to go first, and you can do this in any manner you want to. I'm going to go ahead and have Sleeping Beauty go first, so she's going to start her turn by drawing four cards as the first player. From there, then each player's turn is broken down into four phases. The first phase is the beginning of round phase, where any cards that are currently in play that have some sort of ability that triggers the beginning of the round will be resolved at this point. Sleeping Beauty does not have any of these yet, so then she doesn't have to worry about that. The next phase is the refresh phase, where those cards, if she had any, are going to be discarded to her discard pile, and her defense is going to be returned to zero if she had any remaining from the previous turn. That is also taken care of, so at this point then we'll move into the activation phase, where she gets to play cards from her hand to carry out any of the actions that are listed on the cards, being able to trigger any skills or other abilities that she has. So with Alice, she has one skill card that requires her to play an attack card, which she does not have any right now. I have two movements and a defense, so I'm not going to be able to trigger the skill. So I'm just going to tuck that off to the side. And then I do have a couple of movement cards, so I'm going to play the first one. Then I get a power point for that, and I will move away. And then I'll play a second one, getting another power point, and I'm going to stay there. And then I also have a defense card that I'm going to play, and that'll give me a power point as well, and then I will receive one defense. At this point, again, I don't have that card to be able to play this, so then I'm going to move into the end of round phase. So from there, then I'm also going to choose to spend my power to purchase either cards from my decks or from some of the basic stacks. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'll spend three power in order to purchase a level two uh, defense card. So this will go into my discard pile. And then from there, I'm going to move into the final phase, which is the end of round phase. During this phase, I would reset the power track to zero if I had any remaining power. I'm going to discard any cards that are remaining in my hands and any cards that are in my action section that do not have a lasting effect. So these do not, so I'm going to return these to the discard pile. And then I'll draw a new hand of six cards. And then if there was any other game effects or anything that we're going to trigger at this point, I would resolve those. From there, then it's going to end my turn, and we'll move into Alice's turn. So Alice draws her starting hand of six cards. One, two, three, four, five, six. And she's going to go ahead and look at these. She has two attack, a two defense. She has deal the cards and magic tricks. So she's going to be pretty good this turn. So other than that, she has to choose what kind of card she wants to have for her. She has three different roles, the Cheshire Cat, the Queen of Hearts, and the Mad Hatter. And each one of these has a ability that's going to boost one of her, her ability cards or stat cards, the basic cards, and one that is going to reduce those cards. For example, for example, with the Cheshire Cat, it is going to give you plus one to all your movement cards, but minus one to all your defensive cards. 
So she does have some attack cards and defensive cards. Unfortunately, with the attack cards in that, she has to be right next to, uh, to Sleeping Beauty. And Sleeping Beauty moved away, and we don't have any way of moving next to her. So that is going to be a problem. So for this, we will go ahead and play the Queen of Hearts as it gives us a bonus to our attack cards which we, can, we don't have the ability to use because we're out of range. But we do have defense. Well, actually, let's go ahead and change that. Let's go with the Mad Hatter instead. So with the Mad Hatter, that's going to give us plus one to our defensive cards. So we're going to go ahead and play these two. Or let's play one first. We'll play one of those. And that's going to give us plus one defense and an additional one for the Mad Hatter. So that'll give us two. And then let me take a look at the magic trick card. So this one says that it is defense one, and I can destroy up to one basic card in my hand or discard pile. And then for each card destroyed in this way, add a num no higher than level uh, defense card, or base based on the defense that I've played, I can add that to my, my uh, discard pile. And then I can switch over to the Mad Hatter avatar if I wasn't that already. So with this one, it doesn't have, all I have is basic cards. So if I discard all I would get is another basic card. So that's not really gonna do me any good at this point in time. So I'm just gonna play that second defense card for an additional two defense. Now I do get two power out of that. I only get the power for the card, not for the bonuses that the Mad Hatter gives me. That's why I'm not getting four power instead of the two that I would get with this. And then I don't have anything else at the moment. The attack cards aren't going to do me any good in that. So from there, I'm going to go ahead and purchase a card. And I'm going to go ahead and get a wild for now. And this will go to my discard. That'll spend that. And that will end my turn. So all my cards in my hands and these cards will be discarded. And I'll draw a new set of cards. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. So then this will go to her and we'll move back over to Sleeping Beauty. So with Sleeping Beauty, she has a defense card, another defense, attack, and attack. All right, so we do have some defensive cards, but again, with, uh, with her, she also does not have the range at this point because we moved too far away. So instead, what we're going to do, I will go ahead and spend my first action as a focus action, which will allow me to discard one of the cards from my hand of my choice or from my discard pile. So I'm just going to go ahead and discard. I'm going to discard one of the cards from my discard pile. I'm going to do that level one defense. So that'll be removed from the game. These will be discarded and my turn is over. So this will, my defense will move down as I forgot to do that at the beginning of the turn. And then I would draw back up. I am out of cards, so I'll go ahead and shuffle up my discard and then redraw. Then it is back over to Alice. So Alice has to choose again her avatar. So let's see what she has first. So she has some, a lot of movement cards this time and she has a movement skill as well. So let's go ahead and do the Cheshire Cat initially. And we also have to reduce our defense back down. So at this point, then we're going to go ahead and move into the activation phase or the action phase. So let's start off with, I will go ahead and play the defensive card. It doesn't give me any increase on defense, but I do get one power for it. Because again, the Cheshire Cat reduces my defensive cards by one. Then I will go ahead and play a movement card, and that gives me one movement point, but the Cheshire Cat also bumps that up, so I got two. Then I'm going to uh, do my skill. So anytime you play a skill card, you have to play a card, a basic card that matches that type. So with the, with the Curious, Curiously Agile, you have to play a movement card with it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and play a level one movement. So this says move up to one plus my movement cards value, spaces in a direction. If you move through an opponent this way, draw one card and you may change your avatar to the Cheshire Cat. So I have two movement points with that. So I'm going to go ahead and move through her. I do get one power from this one that I did before, and I missed that, but I do not get any power from playing skill cards and any basic that I play with that. So I do get to draw a card because of that, so let's go ahead and shuffle up our deck as part of that bonus, 
And let's see what I get. So I got a defensive card. Okay. So then I'm going to do a attack card. So again, I gain a power for that. And then we're going over to Sleeping Beauty. She does not have any defense, so she's going to lose one hit point on her health track. And then for each point of damage that she takes, she also gets a token. And when she has six tokens, she'll flip her card over and become awakened, which she has some really cool abilities with that. Then I will play my movement card. Again, I gain a power and I will move one space away. And then finally, I have that defensive card. So I'm going to play that. I gain another power. And again, the Cheshire Cat reduces that by one, so I won't get any defense. So at this point, then I can spend my power, and I have five power to spend. So with that, I will go ahead and do a Mind Trick card. So that's going to cost me two, and that'll be added to my discard. And then I'm also going to purchase a Defense 2 card. And that's three, so that'll take care of the rest of my power. From there, then, all these cards are going to be discarded because none of them have lasting effects. And I'll draw six new cards. Two, three, four, five, six. So that'll be all hers. So at this point, I'm going to take a couple of turns off camera and we'll be back to see how our, our players are doing. So after a couple of turns, we're back at it and our fables have continued to build up their decks. And with Sleeping Beauty, she even unlocked a twist, which you're going to find throughout your decks as you work your way down through them. And the twists are going to provide you with some sort of bonus that you'll be able to use for the rest of the game or a one-time benefit. With this one, we have the mental barriers. And this lets any time that we use a skill, a move skill, we may also gain defense X at the same time, where X is equal to the skill card's number. So this is going to be really handy for Sleeping Beauty to keep her defense up. All right, so then we're back into Sleeping Beauty's turn. She still only has a couple of damage points, so she has not awakened yet, but we'll see what we can do here. All right, so first off, we're going to go ahead and do Grasping Darkness, and that requires a movement card, so we're going to go ahead and do this one with a level two movement and this says that it has a range of three so one two three and it does damage equal to the movement value plus any tokens that we want to use only if we're awakened and then we draw the opponent number of spaces towards you based on that movement card and you cannot you cannot cause your opponent to move through you so with this one it's got a range of three so we're going to do two damage to her and she has no defense right now so she's going to lose two damage and then again, it's going to trigger our ability here, as this is a movement skill. And so we're going to get a number of defense based on the skills level. And I forgot to move this down again. So first off, we're going to gain two defense from that. And then we're also going to move Alice towards us two spaces. Next, I am going to go ahead and play Shattering Chains. This is a defense card that requires a defense to a basic card to be played, and it says until the end of the turn, you gain a plus one defense or plus one damage during each of the next attacks based on the defense card you played. So during the next attack that we do, and this does not have to be in succession. All right, so we'll keep that out. And then I'm gonna do a basic attack. So then this is gonna come into play as well, doing two damage to Alice. So again, she's going to take two damage. And I will get one power for that. And then I have a movement card that I'm gonna go ahead and play and gain a power from that as well. And I'll move back one space. Then I'm going to go ahead and spend the two power to gain the inner rage and this is going to unlock another twist card and this one is bloodletting so it says limited once per turn when you need to play a basic card for an action or skill you may instead choose to lose two four or six hp and if you do so you are treated as if you played a level one two or three basic card you cannot gain power from this so this could be in hand come in handy especially if we really need to pull off a, a skill card or something and we don't have that card in our hands. So from there, I'm gonna go ahead and discard all the rest of my cards. I don't have any power remaining, so I will end my turn by drawing six new cards. Okay. 
And then we're going to move back over to Alice. So again, we're going to look at the cards that she has and choose which avatar she wants to be. We have a couple, we have a lot of defense and a little bit of movement. So I'm going to go ahead and play... Oof. I will play... Let's do the Mad Hatter for her ability. And we'll go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and play this one right away. This is curiously agile. So this lets me move one space plus my movement value or the movement of the card in one direction. If I move through an opponent, I get to draw a card, but unfortunately I won't because I'll be I'll have one, two spaces. If I would have had the Cheshire Cat up, I could have moved an additional space. So I'm just going to move one space towards her. But this lets me change to the Cheshire Cat if I want to. And I don't because it's going to give me penalties to my defense cards. And I have a lot of defense. So I'm going to go ahead and play some defense. So that's four. So I'm going to gain four power from that. One, two, three, four. And I'll get four defense. And then I will go ahead and play another defensive card. That puts me up to a five. So she's going to have a lot of defense this turn. And then she's just going to do a basic attack. And that will give me another one that drops her defense by one. And I have six power to spend. So let's go ahead and buy, I'll buy a movement card for three. And then I'm going to go ahead and buy... Let's go ahead and buy another mind trick. All right, and this one unlocks a twist card. So we have Wonderland. While this avatar, while you were the avatar Mad Hatter, when you would add cards to your discard pile via a defense skill, you may instead choose one of these cards and add it to your hand. That's really cool. Okay, then these are gonna be discarded and we'll draw a new hand. One, two, three, four. We also have to decrease the power as we don't have any use for one. I could buy a level one regular card, but I don't think I want to. All right, back over to Sleeping Beauty to go. So let's see what she has. So again, she's got some good cards. So let's start off with, let's go ahead and do the Grasping Darkness again. So this is going to, again, we have to drop our defense at the beginning of our turn. And then it has a range of three and it does a damage based on our movement that we played. So it's going to do one damage to Alice, dropping her defense by one. And then it also gives us defense because we're playing a movement skill. So that'll give us two as that's a level two card. And let's see what else we want to do. I'm going to go ahead and play a basic movement. Uh, no, not yet. I don't want to do that yet. I want to do an inner rage first. So this is a skill. It has a range of one and it does two damage plus my damage card. So I'm going to do a total of three and then I can also take some damage to increase that. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I will go ahead and take two damage. So I'll drop mine by two. I also get two tokens for that. So I'm up to four. And that's going to increase it by two more. So I do two damage, plus one for the attack for three, plus two more because of the damage I took. So now that's five. So that'll drop her all the way down, and she will take one damage on top of that. And that'll be that. And then I'll, now I'll play my one movement card and move away one space. And the last card I have... I could use my bloodletting, but I don't know if I want to take too much damage just yet. So I think I'm going to hold off on that one and not play that. I don't have anything I really want to buy for one power, so I'm simply going to waste that. And then all this gets discarded, and I will draw new cards. So I have four. And then we're back over to Alice. So with Alice, she has the wild, deal the cards couple of defenses. All right, so we have a lot of defense again. So I can't be the Mad Hatter. So let's go ahead and be the Queen of Hearts instead. Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play the Cheshire Cat. And then I will go ahead and play a Wild. 
and count that as a move. So that'll bring me here. Then I am going to go ahead and play Deal the Cards. So this is going to be an attack skill, so I have to play a, a attack card with it. So this one has a range of one, and it does one damage, and then my opponent reveals three basic cards from her hand, and for each one that she cannot or chooses not to, I do an additional point of damage. So my player over here has plenty of basics, so she's going to reveal a defense, an attack, and, a def and an attack. Now, the reason why she didn't play the level 2 defense is because this card also gives you the ability that you can copy one of those, taking one of those from the supply and adding it to your discard pile. So she doesn't want to reveal a higher level card as that gives the other player quite a nice advantage. So I revealed three basic cards, so I don't take any additional damage, but I will take one for the base attack. So that takes care of that. And then I will switch to the Queen of Hearts so that I don't suffer penalties for my defense. And then I have a bunch of defense that I'm gonna play again. So I have two level ones and a level two. So I'm gonna go up four and I get four power as well. From there, I am going to buy a card. So I'm gonna go ahead and spend three again and well, no, let's go ahead and spend all four and we'll buy a couple of these level two cards. And that'll unlock another twist. So we have, we're all mad here. When the Avatar Cheshire Cat, after you move through your opponent via move action or an opponent moves through you via move action, you may draw one card. So that'll be nice. And that is the end of her turn. Okay, so again, at this point, I am going to go ahead and take a couple turns off camera, and then we'll be back to see how our players are doing. After a few more rounds, our Fables have continued to build their decks and have not had a lot of opportunities to do damage. Both have been playing pretty defensively so far. But Sleeping Beauty has taken enough damage now, so she is awake. So depending upon the cards in her hand, this could be quite a devastating round. So moving into her turn, let's see what she has. All right, so first off, she is going to go ahead and play Grasping Dark. So this one, again, is going to have a range of three, and it does a number of damage equal to the movement card that's played, plus now she can choose to spend up to three tokens on this to do additional damage. So she is going to do that. She'll spend three tokens and return those to the pile. And then with this, it's going to do a total of one damage from the movement card and three more from that. So that is four damage combined. So one, two, three, four. And that'll take care of that. Now she does get the defense for that. Normally she can't gain defense from defensive cards, but abilities will let her do that. So she's going to gain two from that. And then she's going to go ahead and do it again as she has a second one of those cards. And she has another move, and she'll go ahead and spend those tokens again. And now that she's out of tokens, she is going to fall back asleep. So again, she'll gain that defense, and she's going to do four more damage to Alice. One, two, three, four. So Alice is almost at her threshold, where she's going to be able to pick up her epic card. And from there, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and play a defensive card. So I'll bump my defense up again, and I'll get a power for that and I have an attack card so I'll do that and I do one more damage which will pass up Alice's threshold so at this point Alice will look at her defense or her epic cards and choose one of them that she wants to add to her hands or her discard pile so she's going to go ahead and choose the Frabjus Day and add that to her discard pile and the other two will be simply discarded as you will never be able to add more than one epic card during your game so at this point, uh, Alice or uh, Sleeping Beauty's turn is done, so we'll go ahead and discard these. She does have two power, so she will go ahead and pick up another card here, and that will unlock another twist. So this one is Blood Right. So limited once per turn, you may inflict at least two, four, six damage on an opponent. You may choose to add a, a no higher than level one, two, or three attack card, and not a wild back into your hands from your discard pile. So that is definitely handy. And then she'll draw her new hands. 
All right, so let's see if Alice can counter at this point, as she definitely needs to start doing some damage. All right, so she has no, no defense, and we forgot to reduce her power. Okay, so let's see. I will start off with... i got to choose my avatar. So I am right on top of... Sleeping Beauty Well Let's go ahead and start with the Mad Hatter first And I will go ahead and play a defense card that's going to give me two defense and I'll gain a power and then Let's do Let's do curiously agile and this is going to, I'm going to play a level two movement card with that. And it says move up to a number of one space plus your movement card in one direction. If you move through your opponent in this way, you get to draw a card and you may change your avatar to, or avatar to the Cheshire Cat. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'll move through. And that means I get to draw a card into my hands. And then I can also change to the Cheshire Cat. And I'll place that there. And then now that I have the, the cat, I will go ahead and do it again with another level two move. I get two power from this one, as this is a basic move. And I can use my avatar now. So again, it says while the Cheshire Cat, well, my avatar is the Cheshire Cat, after you move through an opponent via a move action, or when an opponent moves through you via a move action, I get to draw an additional card. So I get to do that. And I have another level one movement, but I get plus one move for her. So again, I get another power and I will go ahead and move through again and gain another card. So now I have mind trick. So first off, let's do an attack. It's a level one attack, does one damage. And... I will do a level two attack. So two more power, two more damage. Still not getting through the defense. And then finally I have this mind trick card. So defense two, destroy up to two basic cards from your hand or discard pile. If each card destroyed in this way, you can add a card, but I don't have any cards in my discard pile besides my epic at this point. So it's not gonna do me any good there, but at least it gets me two more defense and so I'm going to go ahead and do that and get the two defense out of that. So then I have six power or seven power so I can do some purchasing. So I will buy a level three attack card. So at this point, then I have finished off my turn and I'll go ahead and draw back up. So that was pretty effective, even though I didn't do a lot of damage. I am building a pretty strong hand, hopefully here. And we're back over to Sleeping Beauty. So she is out of power or defense. So let's see what she has. All right, so let's go ahead and start with an Inner Rage and I'll play a level one attack card with it. So this has a range of one and it does two damage plus my attack card and I can inflict additional damage if I want to. And I don't think I want to at this point, so I'm going to do three damage so that it'll drop her down. One, two, three. And that'll take care of that. And then I have Groping Dark, and I have a one movement card for that. So it's going to do one damage to her, so that'll drop her down there. And it does get me a defense from my twist and then I have I have the wrenching dark so with that one I am going to use my bloodletting ability and this one has a range of four and it does damage equal to my movement card that I play so I'll go ahead and take four damage one two three four and that'll get me four tokens And that's a level two card, so I'm going to do two damage from that. 
on two. And then because I triggered that, it's also gonna give me the defense. So one, two, three defense, because that's a level three card. And that is all I have, as I have another skill card that I cannot use at this point. So then my turn is over, I don't have any power, so I'm gonna go ahead and draw back up. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we're back over to Alice's turn. So again, Alice has to choose her. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the Cheshire Cat to take advantage of, the, of those abilities. So I'm going to play a level one movement. So I gain a power and I'm going to pass through and lets me draw another card. And I will do it again. Passing back through, getting another power and picking up another card. So then I will do magic trick with a level one defense. It's gonna give me one defense from that. And I can, use, I can discard or destroy a level one basic card and replace it, which I don't think I wanna do with this one. But it does let me change over to the Mad Hatter, so I will do that. And then I will play, I'm gonna go ahead and play Mind Trick. So this is the higher level one. This is a defense two, so I'm gonna gain two more defense. And then I can destroy up to two basic cards from your hand or discard pile, so I will do that. So I'll do a level one attack and a level one move. So I'll destroy those, and then I get cards to replace those. So I will take a level two attack and a level two move. All right. So that takes care of that one. And then I have just two regular cards, or two skills that I cannot activate at this point. So those will simply be discarded. And I have two power, so I will buy another Cut the Cards. And it unlocks a new twist. So this one is off with her head. While your avatar is the queen of hearts, when you would add a card to your discard pile via a skill, an attack skill, you may instead add it to your hand instead. So that's cool. All right. And then these are all going to be discarded as they don't have any lasting effects. And we'll draw a new hand. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, again at this point I'm going to take a few more turns off camera and then we should be back in time to finish up the game. So we're back after a few more turns and our fables are really ramping up. Alice is really starting to show her colors. She just got through like 12 cards from her hands as she was really taking advantage of the Cheshire Cat and moving back and forth, picking up additional cards. And Alice, or Sleeping Beauty is awake again so we're going to see if she can dish out some pain. So with that, let's get into it. So she's going to go ahead and start off by doing the Retching Dark. And it's going to be a range of four. And the damage is equal to her movement. And she is going to spend three tokens on that to do three more damage. So that's going to take four damage from Alice. And she has no defense currently. So one, two, three, four. And that is also going to raise my defense by three due to the mental barriers. And then I do have a groping dark as well, which is going to do the same thing again for damage and will raise my defense by one more. One, two, three, four. So Alice is closing in on death. Then I'm gonna go ahead and move one space away, and I don't think there's any point in doing that. So I'm going to go ahead and finish there. I also have to flip back over to my sleeping side. Back over to Alice now. So first off, we have to choose our avatar, and I am going to switch out for the Cheshire Cat again. And let's see what I'm going, I got to do. So, I'm going to go ahead and start off by doing the Curiously Curious, and I'm going to play a level one move, so it's going to move me up to three spaces, plus an additional one for my movement card, 
in one direction. So again, one, two, three, passing her. Then I get to draw three cards. So one, two, and three. Okay. Ooh. All right, so that's her first one. Let's reset that. Well, let's go ahead and start with, I'm gonna do a basic hat trick. So this is gonna give me a defense of two. And let me switch over to the Mad Hatter and I'm not going to use the other ability on the card. I'm go ahead and play another defensive card, bringing me up two more and I'll get two power out of that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do cut the cards and I'm gonna play an attack card, a level three attack card with it. Well, let's, let's not do that just yet. Now that I'm the Mad Hatter, let's go ahead and do the hat trick. It's a defense three, so it'll raise me up to my highest level of defense, which is six. And then I can discard or destroy three basic cards from my hands or discard pile. So let's do level one attack. Level one defense, and a level one move. So I'll destroy all three of those, and I'll add, why don't I might as well just add one of each in there. And then since I am the Mad Hatter, now I have Wonderlands. So when you add cards from your discard pile with a defense skill, you may instead choose one of those cards to add to your hands. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a level two attack to my hands. Uh, these will go to the discard, and that goes there. Now I will play Cut the Cards with the level 2 attack. And this has a range of 2, which I'm plenty, I have plenty of range. It does 2 damage, so it's going to drop her defense by 2. And then I have to, she's going to have to reveal 4 basic cards. So I have 1, 2, and 3. So she's going to take two more damage because she couldn't reveal that fourth card. And then I can copy that, so I will do that. And so with this skill, when I have the uh, off with her head, I can gain that. So actually, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do the attack card instead, and I'll add that to my hand. These will go back to her. And then I'm going to switch out to the Queen of Hearts. Oh, I can't do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and not do that and take that movement instead because I wasn't the queen of hearts yet. So I couldn't activate that twist. So from there, then I have some other options. So I'm gonna do another attack. I have an attack three plus the queen of hearts will add an additional damage to that. So that's four more damage. So one, two, and two more there. And that gives me four power, or three power, one, two, three. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do a move. And it does minus one to my movements because of the Queen of Hearts card. But I do have seven power now. So I am going to I'm going to pick up another one of these. Okay. And that will be my turn. So this, she gets to shuffle up and look at that deck, man. She has got some cards. And I'll discard the rest back over to Sleeping Beauty. So I don't have any defense to drop. And let's see what I have for my cards. All right, so not a super strong hand here. So first off, I'm going to start with the Grasping Darkness, or Dark. Uh, again, it has a range of three, and it does damage based on my move, plus any tokens, which I can't spend any at, the, at this point. So it'll do two damage. So it'll drop her defense by two. And then it does move her towards me. Then I have... I do. I have a range one. It's two damage plus the attack that I play. So I'll play a level one. So that's three damage. And I will take... Do I want to take any damage at this point? Uh, I don't know. 
I am, and then I also get that triggered, so I do get two defense from that. I will. I don't think I'm going to. So I'm just going to do three damage to her. So one, two, three, or uh, off her defense. So it doesn't trigger that. And I can do one more attack action and drop her down to zero. And I don't think I'm going to do this. Now the one option I do have, I could take some more damage to basically do a level three attack against her, but I'd have to lose six health, which would put me very low. It would give me the token, so I would go into my awakened state, but at this point, it would still leave her with a couple of hit points, so I'm going to hold off and see how things go from here, just in case she has a really good round. I would hate to do that and get killed off because I was stupid and spent those points. Two, three, four, five, six. All right, back over to Alice. So let's see what she has. So again, we'll drop our defense. We don't have any, so it is back into her turn. And we have to choose a avatar, so I'm going to bump, go right back to that Cheshire Cat, as I do have some movements. So let's go ahead and do this one here. And this lets me go up to four spaces. If I move through her, then I get to draw two cards. So I'll get two more cards out of this. And... Then I will go ahead and do a regular movement. Again, moving through, triggering the cat's ability. I have another movement. So I'm going to pick up four points for that. One, two, three, four, because I had the three and then the four. And then I get another card for that. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and play this one here with a level one defense. And that'll let me switch to the Mad Hatter. And it'll give me plus three defense. One, two, three. Then I will go ahead and play a level two defense, which is going to give me my additional three. So that'll max me out at six. And I don't have any other cards to play these skills. So those aren't going to do me any good. But I did pick up those two extra points to give me six more points for some cards. So I'm going to go ahead and buy this one here. And that will unlock... One of my other twists, so it says, when you draw cards at the end of your turn, draw an extra card. This twi twist effect is cumulative, so with all other twists. So I'll add that in, and now I get to draw seven cards each turn. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we'll see if Alice can hold on here, getting down to the wire. So back over to Sleeping Beauty. She drops the rest of her defense. Our characters have a lot of defense here. Okay, so I'm going to start off with do sh uh, doing Shattering Chains, which is going to add a damage to my next attack. Then I will go ahead and do... I'll do a level 3 attack, or a level 1 attack for that. So it's going to do 2 damage. So I'll bring her down to 4 defense. And then let's do Grasping Dark. That's a level two defense. So it's going to do two damage to her. So that'll bring her down to two hit points. And then I have a movement that I'll play to move away one space. And I do get uh, two defense for that. And I had the one move for one power, but I'm not going to spend that. So that is it for Sleeping Beauty. She has had some bad hands here. She has not been able to capitalize on the early advantages she had. One, two, three, four, five, six. So unfortunately, it's getting late in the game for Sleeping Beauty. If she doesn't hurry it up, Alice is definitely going to toast her here. All right, back over to Alice's turn. So again, we have to choose what we're going to do. I have a few movement cards so I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to go ahead and do the Cheshire Cat. 
So first off, I'll do Curiously Covert with a level two move, which is gonna let me, give me plenty of movement to move through, and then I get to draw two new cards. Okay. And then I have another move, so that's two points. One, two. Let's me move through and draw another card. I have another move, so two more points. And bouncing back to draw another card. It's an attack card. I have an additional move, so I'll do that. So that's two more. And I'm back on this end. I, I'm giving poor Alice, an, or uh, Sleeping Beauty, a neck ache here. She cannot keep track of where I am at. Okay, so from there I am out of those, but I have some nasty attacks here. So let's go ahead and start with the rig the cards attack. So this one is going to have a range of three and it does three damage. So that will take care of that and one damage on there. And now I'm going to go one, two, or just one. Yep. On there. And then the opponent must reveal five basic cards for a hand or gain the damage from the card. So I do have two. I have two. So I'm going to take six more damage. Ouch. One, two, three, four, five, six. So there's three, four, five. Okay, that's, and then I can switch out. So I am going to switch to the Queen of Hearts. From there, I have a whole bunch of attack cards. So I'm just going to hammer away here. There's three more. One, two, three. And there's another three, so that finishes off Sleeping Beauty. Oh my goodness, she just did not have the cards those last couple turns to really seal the deal, and Alice was running away with this. So Alice comes out on top, finishing the game with just six health left. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you have any questions or comments, leave those in the comments section below and I'll do my best to answer them. Or swing by the Kickstarter's main page and drop any questions you have there as well. I'm sure the creators would love to hear from you and are more than happy to answer any questions you have. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch my videos and leave me feedback on them. I do appreciate it and I take into account everything you say to make the best possible videos. Until next time, I'll see you later.